And we're live. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Closer Show. So this shit right here is staying right here all year. But this shouldn't be stressful at all. That's when Pop Hunter just because he wouldn't give it to me. Jeans, private stock lead. But it's, let's go. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to another Closer Show. I know we haven't done shows in a little while, and you guys have been asking, so we decided to come back today in a big way. We got the one and only RJ Bates on deck, ready to rock to close some deals for you. I think last time he was on, he got two deals locked up back-to-back, which is nuts. For those of you guys who are in the game and have been in the game for a while, it's lucky to get one contract today, much less two back-to-back. For those of you guys who are brand new, you guys have never seen The Closer Show before. I don't fault you, maybe a little bit, but that's beyond the point. What The Closer Show is, is we're calling leads that we generated on ispeedtolead.com. It's a website. It's the best lead gen website out there. You go on there, you sign up for free. You can see leads in your market, right? Imagine you guys are on like a website you're not supposed to be on, right? And the website says something to you like, you know, hot single moms in your area, right? Obviously, there's no hot single moms in your area. But but imagine instead of hot single moms, it's leads, okay? And instead of it being totally fake, the leads are real. They're ready to go. They want to sell their house. They're motivated. That's ispeedtolead.com. So go in, check it out. And so what we're doing today is we're calling the leads that you guys decided not to buy. The leads you guys didn't buy on the platform. And so we're going to show you that even off these, you know, so-and-so bottom of the barrel leads you guys are going to be able to uh to watch how we get them locked up all day long so um you know without further ado i think it's just time to introduce the uh the main man the man of the hour mr rj bates the third the king closer what's up liam good to see you man what's up man i've been missing you right we haven't had any of this for like two months with you on I know, dude. And and I first and foremost, I apologize about that. I've been missing this so much. Uh, I, I got sick twice during that time, and we had a fire at our office. No way. Um, luckily, it wasn't our office. Our office sits on top of a restaurant, and, uh, and the restaurant caught on fire Monday morning at like 8.30 in the morning, right when we were showing up. And uh, luckily, we got the fire department out here, and uh, they they got it, to, you know, handled. But uh, there were still some issues with our office. So yeah, man, I'm I'm excited to be back, ready to show you show the the power of speed to lead leads, and uh, hopefully, I can add some game for everybody. And I mean, beyond showing the power of just the high speed to lead leads, I think the other thing we want to talk about is the uh, the titanium crucible. And I know you didn't know I was about to give you the plug on this, but I know there's a couple of people out there who in some of my groups who uh, just went to your most recent titanium crucible. And if you guys don't know what that is, you definitely should. But it's where you go out to Texas, you sit with RJ and his team, and they have this awesome little event center that they have set yep. up with like lights, sirens, actions and and I mean, it, it, it's just like the coolest event. And you're going to go out, learn exactly what he's doing, how he's building his business, how he's doing his marketing, how he's converting, all of that stuff, how he's doing dispo. And you just get a blueprint to do all of that. And so I know a couple of people have been there. One of my good friends, Lori, actually, and she's crushing it all thanks to RJ. So if you guys uh, uh, make sure you guys check that, if you just Google Titanium Crucible, first yeah. thing that comes up easily. Yeah, I appreciate that plug, man. And honestly, it's something that we're we're super passionate about. I love being able to help people do what we do daily, right? And and it's changed our lives, right? And so uh, that's why I do free content like this on YouTube and on TikTok. Um, I, I love to be able to showcase, you know, how we help sellers and, uh, you know, just make money doing what we're passionate about. So it's it's awesome. Dude, I think that's something we need to talk about too. You're a little ticky talk star now, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> So the you know doing these lives, it's got to take it off. It's funny. I I started posting videos on TikTok of me closing, and and some of them are me getting cussed out. Some of them are are funny conversations I've had. One of them was like someone just started rapping like right in the middle of the conversation. Um, you know, and obviously some of the closings as well. And and yeah, it has really taken off. And so. If you've never done TikTok before, you know I'm not I'm not up there dancing and shaking my ass or anything. But uh, uh, it <laughs> has that's it's, it's fun. I actually have a new acquisitions guy 
who works for us now, and he came from TikTok, and he's and he's a badass. And so, Dude, look at that. That is awesome. Yeah, it, I saw you awesome. mention that, yeah, because I saw some people that were asking you about how you were doing your hiring. You're like, honestly, TikTok's been great for us. Yeah, yeah, it has been, you know, and, and also it's helped out with, uh, you know, Crucible as well and just getting the message out there. I, I see someone on here just messaged me on TikTok. He said, uh, what's happening, man? Your aggressive way – uh, got me to open up and I'm closing deals like crazy now. So, you know, just man. being able to watch some of these helps people. Man, so if you guys, um, we, we launched a little community too called One Club and we've got about 400 people in there now. And so we do live trainings every day for free. And one of the biggest things I've noticed because we listen to a bunch of call recordings is that the one thing that you do so exceptionally well is you show you're not afraid to walk away from a deal. I think that like there's, there's a strategy that some people utilize. It's called a takeaway, right? Where they yep. show that they're going to walk away or back out of something. And you do it to a complete other level. If the seller won't give you a price first, you'll literally just like hang up on them. It's like, oh, you know yep. what? I'll wait till you get a price. And like you do that better than anybody else. I think you just go stronger in it than anybody else. You just strong arm everybody. Well, I, I appreciate that. And I will say it, your, your pitch when you're calling a seller has to be different uh, depending upon the, the form of marketing that you're doing, right? I wouldn't necessarily do that if I was cold calling someone, but these are inbound leads that they've come to our website and said, I do want to sell my house. So they're selling us that property. They should have a price in mind. Anybody else in any industry, if they sell anything, they have a price. And so the, the analogy I use is, is I don't go into Walmart to buy you know toothpaste and they say, well, make me your best offer on that toothpaste. They, they have a price tag on it. And, and that's pretty much how I feel about this. So, all right. Um, are we are we ready to rock and roll, man? I've, I've been itching for a while to, to get back on the phone. Dude, yes, you are ready to rock and roll. And while you're all getting right. everything pulled up for your first dial, I want to show people we launched Speed to Lead Premium about two weeks ago. And it's awesome. The difference between the regular Speed to Lead and the Speed to Lead is now. Let's look at this one. We got this one in Louisiana, this, this lead here. What you're going to get, actually, let's look, this one's in Sacramento. This one's way cooler. Um, you go. You're going to get not only all the basic information about property condition, what repairs, how long they've been living there, all that sort of stuff, but now you're getting the type of home. You're getting the zip code, the square footage. This is a 5,000 plus square foot home in Sacramento. It's nuts, right? You, the year it was built, the bedrooms, bathrooms, and we're going to keep adding to that as time goes on. So the premium you just for $49 a month, you get access to all this extra data. That way you can really cherry pick. And so I actually ran a test where I was just completely cherry picking just like a couple of leads. And so we did a test, a test batch of about 15, uh, 15. And of those 15, we got five contracts of just five most cherry picked leads. So I mean, one in every three, which is just nuts. It's crazy good uh, conversion rate. So if you're really cherry picking and you want to get the best data for the very best leads, just get the premium. It's worth it. All right. We ready to rock and roll, man? I'm ready to rock and roll. Absolutely. All right. Get it running. Let's get our first dial going on here. We got Andy with a question. What do you say when this is a scam call? You're, uh, when they said this is a scam call, you were hoping my old mother answered to steal the house. Well, I, <laughs> I, on those circumstances, if, if they say, hey, this is a scam call, um, I just go into the fact that, you know, you can look me up on the internet. I'm not scamming anybody. I'm looking to purchase a property. Um, it sounds like you're probably not the right fit um, and and just kind of move on with it. I'm not going to sit there and, and waste a lot of time to try to convince someone to, to sell a house to me because I feel like there's plenty of opportunities. And on something like that, Andy, that probably looks like an outbound phone call, not an inbound um, and so that's where something like speed to lead could really help you with your closing abilities, because you're going to be getting warm inbound leads that they're saying, yes, I do want to sell. Instead of you trying to go out and mine those leads yourself, you're allowing speed to lead to do that for you. So I would definitely say to just help you out with your closing, look into something like speed to lead. So but I, let's see if we get some kind of a lead like that today. Um, all right, let's get going. If I can figure out how to read this spreadsheet. Do you like my closers desk that I've got here? Bro, that's an epic desk you got going <laughs> on. I had to change my shirt about five minutes ago because it was green screening me out. <laughs> Hello. 
Hi, is Terry there? Yeah, is this George Strait? <laughs> uh, no, I, I might sound a little country, but I, I'm not as uh, famous, and I definitely can't sing as well as George Strait. No, you sound a little more Yankee. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm from Fort Worth, Texas, so I ain't got no Yankee in me. Hey. <laughs> Some of them uh, blue coats must have stayed around Texas <laughs> with that Yankee blood in them during the war. <laughs> hey, Terry, uh, my name's RJ. I was calling you. Uh, you had entered your uh, property on Riverside or in Riverside there on our website saying you were looking to sell that property. You still looking to sell it? I would. You would? I didn't, I didn't know what I was getting into, I guess, because I've had eight people calling me and everything else i got you I, I didn't know what i was getting into and doing that i guess i understand i thought it was somebody trying to contact somebody. well have you have you decided to, to move forward with any of those people no okay how come i won't even talk to them oh, okay well I, I, don't, I won't even talk to an asian person i mean unless i go to a chinese restaurant <laughs> well, well, I'm not Asian, so will you talk to me? <laughs> well, uh, are you interested in talking to me about the property? I, I don't know what kind of deal you pushing today, man. I just don't know. You know so. I just want to make you a cash offer. I mean, did you have an asking price in mind for the property? What's your offer? I don't know. That's why I'm asking you. Did you have an asking price? You come out there and look at it, and we'll go from there. Well, that's a long way for me to drive all the way from Fort Worth, Texas. It is. So why, that's what I'm saying. What's the deal? What kind of deal you got here? Well, I'm... You ain't going to drive from Fort Worth, Texas to look at nothing. No, sir. I'm a, I'm a real estate investor, so I'm always looking for opportunities to buy something that I can either rent out, sell it finance, or, or fix up and sell for a profit. So that's what I'm looking for. And your property... I'd probably be looking uh, at something that I could either sell or finance or, or fix up and, and rent it out long term. Uh, so that's why I just wanted to. Can you, can you hold on a second? Hold on one second. Sure. So yeah, he uh, he uh, definitely hit me with some awkward awkward stuff there, but uh, it is what it is. That's that's part of the game. You're gonna hear that sometimes. All right. Well, while he's got me on hold, I'm gonna look up see what we got going on around there. properties hey. yes sir okay sorry about that no worries it's, uh... so uh did you did you have an asking price in mind or or what what was the situation there uh we was asking the building across the street they're asking uh 475 and then also across the street there's a about a two acre tract of land they're asking like uh 175. okay There's buildings you know around there for sale so we're asking 300. 300 okay yeah and how much land comes with your property there i think it's like a point ninety two or something so it's just under acre just under an acre okay so how did you how did you come to, to 300. Okay. And it's a metal building and it's a brick building and it's, uh, you know, for what I've bought it for and redone the brick building, just got to redo it. Yeah. Everything new in it, you know, and uh, just uh, got a lot in it. 
you know, stuff costs a lot right now to redo something. If you've done anything, it can cost you a lot of money right now. Right. Hmm. Uh, it's right next door to a Dollar General. Yeah, I'm seeing that. Um, that's actually... you looking at it on what? On some kind of site? Yeah, I'm just looking at it on Google Maps right now, just so I can see the, the area. It's showing two buildings. Is it showing two buildings? Um, I only see the one building, but I see the Dollar General next door. I'm assuming... You're looking at something old. You're looking at something old, then, what you're looking at. Yeah. Well, it just depends on when the last time you Google. Roof? Yes, sir. I don't do. I don't, I'm not a Google person. I use Waze. You know. I don't know. It's, right. Anyway, yeah, you're looking at something old. Yeah, it's got red. They red roof, metal roof. Metal, you know. I gotcha. So I, I'll just be honest with you. You know, being next to that commercial is is kind of detrimental for me. Um, I I don't. I try to. Well, well, I, I don't try to be close to commercial. Um, that usually well, it is. It is commercial. It is commercial. So this is a commercial building that you're selling. Yeah. Okay. And are is it vacant or are you living in it or what what's being done with the property? Mm, I've got some stuff stored in it. Okay. So I, I mean, I'm looking at this image. I mean, what could you do with it if you if you were to use it for uh, you know commercial usage? What what do you think could be done with it? I think anything you wanted to do. It was a dental office at one time, and then it was a church at one time. Okay. And then I mean, you could do whatever you wanted to with it, you know. I see. I had some people look at it Saturday, Sunday, and she. They, they, he's an electrical company, and she's a. His wife's got three uh, pet grooming places, and you know, they're thinking about opening another one there. You know, it's just you could do whatever you wanted to with it. You can make a restaurant. The city says if you'll put a restaurant there, you can do anything you want to do. <laughs> but you know, I'm not going to put a restaurant there. How, is, does it have a parking lot in front of it? It's got it. And you can drive all the way around the building. This is gravel all the way around. This, you know, where you can drive all the way around. I see. It's got parking in the back. So you, you're just looking at something old on Google. Yeah, I mean, that's. Google. I don't see how you can do business like that. And I don't even see how you, how you can even do business like you're doing. You know? Well. It's kind of scary to me. <laughs> Well, I mean, to be honest with you, we usually purchase somewhere in the range of about 60 to 70 deals a month. Um, now, we're not typically buying commercial where we're mainly single family residences only, uh, maybe a small multifamily here or there. Um, but normally, the way this would work would be based off of comps in the area. But because this is a commercial building, there's going to be a lot of things that we have to take into consideration, right? The usage for the building and then what that would look like from a cash flow perspective. So if I were to buy it, I would be renting it out to a business. So, you know, what would a business be willing to pay me to rent this area? Um, so these are the, these are the things that are kind of running through my head right now as to just understanding what would be my exit strategy on this particular property. And, and to be honest with you, this is going to take a little bit more due diligence on my part to, to understand what I would be willing to pay for something like this and what I could offer you than just what I can discover on a simple call like this. Normally, if this was just a, a, a straightforward, you know, three bedroom, two bath, single family residence, 1200 square feet, it'd be very easy for me to say, hey, this is what I could offer you. It's 1600 square foot. Right. I, I'm just using that as an example of what, you know, what I would normally do and how it would be so, so much easier. But considering that this is zone commercial and, and it's got two buildings and the information that is available to me on, on Google is obviously outdated and it doesn't show me the exact building. I'm going to have to do some more due diligence. So, you know, why don't I do this, Terry? Why don't, you give me some time here to just look into it a little bit more. I've got your phone number. 
and I can reach out to you if this is something that, you know, I'm going to be anywhere close to that $300,000 number. But like I said, I just need to do a little bit more due diligence on this before I say, hey, this is something I can or can't do on this particular property. Okay. All right. I appreciate your time, Terry. And, and like I said, I'll reach back out to you if, if we're going to be anywhere close to that number. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. So that was, um, that was interesting. Liam, you there? I am there. So this is uh, a, a building that looks very much like a single family, but it's zone commercial, right? He's saying there's a second building in the back. He's saying it has a parking lot on it. Everywhere I look, there's no parking lot. There's no building in the back. It is right next to the Dollar General. And, and, but the other aspect of this is, is it's in the middle of nowhere in Alabama. <laughs> and, and so he, he's saying, hey, you know, it used to be a dental office. You could rent it out for this or that. I mean, unfortunately for, for me and my business, this is one of those situations like what I was talking about earlier. Um, you know, if I'm talking to a lead and the lead is, you know, being disgruntled and saying that we're a scam or something, I'm just going to move on to the next lead. <laughs> Same thing with this. Like, I don't want to get bogged down with trying to, to either wholesale or own a, a house that basically zoned commercial in the middle of nowhere in Alabama. That's just. It's just, it's, it's just tough. It's tough to move. In yeah. Any state. Yep. Yep. I mean, so. It's unfortunate that, you know, I got him on the phone and that was, that was the situation, but it is what it is. So, all right, I'm going to move on to the next one. Let me got Mr. Kip Stevens saying, is this really live? RJ, what do you think? Uh, yes, sir. Mr. Kip, by the way, shout out to Kip. We had a lead in Bakersfield, California, and we needed someone to run out there. He drove two and a half hours one way to get a contract delivered to an elderly seller. So, Thank you, Kip. And we're still working on that deal. We'll keep you uh, up to date. She's wanting her friend who understands real estate to take a look at the contract. Then my friend Evan said, if you sign up for forwarded to an automatic voice message system, nine zero six seven four eight zero eight five eight eight one is not available at the tone. Please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press one for more options. Hey, Don, this is RJ Bates calling you about your property in Michigan. Okay. I like that. I like that. The fast hang up there. But what Evan says is, uh, do you get the, the property before you buy? No, we can't give that away because then all of a sudden you just, you know, for $50, you buy the uh, premium, you see the address, you see that it's ready to go. And then you're just going to skip trace it on your own, pay seven, you know, seven to 10 cents. And all of a sudden, you know that that person, you know, you know, as much information then as uh, anybody else. Does. So we can't give that away. We would really like to, um, but otherwise, you know, people looking to save money. So uh, someone on TikTok asked me, where am I getting my leads from? Right now, I'm getting my leads from ispeedthelead.com. Okay, the, these are the leads that I'm calling. He also asked, where do I pull my list of absentee owners? I pull my uh, list from batch leads, okay? And those are basically our two main uh, lead generation sources right there. So inbound is going to be from speed to lead, and then outbound is going to be through batch leads. After the tone. Hey, Walter, this is RJ Bates calling about your property in Emmitsburg. Avatar Media says, is Batch still accurate? Been, been experiencing a ton of incorrect info on their lists lately. Um, yeah, I haven't. I haven't run into that at all. We're running into that on prop stream. Hello. Hi, is Billy there? Speaking. Hey, Billy, this is RJ Bates calling about your property on Captain Frank. 
Um, you entered it on our website. Are you still looking to sell that property? I just closed on it today. Oh, excellent. That's uh, fantastic news. Did it come from uh, the, the clicking on the ad there? Oh, well, congratulations, man. I'm I'm sorry for calling you again, but that's uh, great news. Congratulations on getting rid of that property. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks. All right. You have a great day. Bye-bye. All right. All right. Bye. There you go. If you want to know if the leads are good, someone made money on it. Man, do we love Robin. 40 people watching and only six likes. To an automatic voice message system. <laughs> Nine, zero, four, five, eight. Robin's the light, please. Six, five is not available. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press one for more options. JC, this is RJ calling about your property on Cobblestone. Oh, Austin, Texas. Let's get this one, baby. Ooh, Cassie says, Liam, we have four. You guys are beating us. We've got like double the viewers on our page. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are more loyal. Had to jump in, bring it on to seven likes. There we go. Hey, is this Carlo? This is hey, Carlo, this is RJ Bates calling about your property on Goddard Bluff. Um, you had entered it on our website saying you were looking to sell that property. Are you still looking to get rid of it? I, uh, I am. Yeah. Okay. Did you, uh, have an asking price in mind? Uh, last four offer I got from Orchard was 650 Okay. Was that, uh, so with Orchard though, that that's going to be more of like a, a listing nowadays, right? They're not actually purchasing it, right? Purchase it. Okay. They can sell it. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, that that's what they do. Is they say, hey, we can either purchase it or sell. Okay. Six hundred and fifty thousand. All right. And is that before or after their fees? Uh, their fee is six percent. Uh, but if you don't take money out, they'll give you ninety percent of the price and then the rest when they sell it. If you don't get the money out first, it's four percent. So I yep. don't need the money, so it's probably four percent. Gotcha. Okay. Well, let me take a look at this real quick. Gotcha. How come you haven't moved forward with it? I am. I'm just moving right now. We have an appointment on the 5th and the 7th. So. Okay, so have you already signed a contract with them? No, 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 no. I haven't. I'm moving right now, so they wanted me to go down and do a video. I could not. I'm moving, so there's no way. But it's in Austin right now. I have an appointment on the 5th and then a follow appointment on the 7th. I mean... It was insane. I, the, the highest offer besides that was 550. So they went they went up to 650. So we'll see. I mean, it's all BS and it's BS, but they gave me a range. Could be higher, could be lower, but you know. Got I got you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, I would uh, just based off of what I'm looking here. I mean, if they give you anywhere close to 650 thousand, I would take that and uh, run to the bank as quickly as possible. That looks like a hell of a deal for you. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, congratulations, man. Hope it hope it works out for you. All right. Bye bye. Man, those are such bummers because you see Austin, Texas, and it's like yes, yes, yes. But then you know they got some big corporate money already in there, and you know at the end of, they're still going to try and screw them on the back end unless you haven't right and it's not done. But it, you just can't come over that. Listen to me. When I pulled that up, all of the comps started with a four. So, <laughs> now, granted. His house was much larger than everything else going on in the neighborhood. But still, there's no way in the world that that could be a, an accurate price that they're giving him. That, that's crazy. You know, they're, they're, they're just doing that open door model. They throw some number out and then they come in. They're like, oh, let us run our inspection. And then that 650 is just to hook you. And then either they'll give you the 650, but then they'll take, you know, 28% in fucking fees. Right. All right. Let's, let's get this one. This one's in uh, Oregon. Three seven three. Which, by the way, Liam, don't let me forget. I need to update you guys on that Oregon deal that I closed with Aaron. Oh, Bevins. there we go. <laughs> Hello. 
Please leave your message for Dana Whitford. Hey, Dana, this is RJ Bates calling about your property on Clark Street. Okay, so back on one of the well, – it was the original – closers match that we did right yeah, the very first one um i i snuck out a victory with a, a last minute closing on a deal got the signed contract in um i believe it was south bend oregon okay so the situation there was is the seller was facing a foreclosure and and he was desperate to sell the property right he, so yeah he was begging him yeah, he was like seven hundred fifty thousand. We got him to sign at seven hundred thousand. Okay, so here is the situation: we're still under contract on that property. Okay, okay. So when he told us the property was concrete built, okay, he said it's built out of concrete and it, you know, it's a great property. It would withstand like a nine point oh earthquake, right? <laughs> what I didn't understand was, is it was straight up like a New Mexico Adobe. All right. In, <laughs> in Oregon, Oregon. <laughs> on the coast in a forest. So, oh, imagine, yeah. So those people love that. That's yeah. So move. imagine the most awkward looking house in like out of place ever. Well, it's okay? going to stand forever. Right. So we started doing dispositions on it and, and there was a lot of interest just straight off of the numbers. The problem was everybody was like, hey, this is just so out of place and it's such a unique property. I don't really want to take the chance. So we continued to work dispositions. We stayed in great rapport. Patrick's done a great job of communicating with the seller. And basically the seller situation is, is he's like, listen, I love you guys. I understand that you guys are, are going to put in all of the work for me here. So I trust you go out and, and take as long as you need, because as long as he's under contract, he can't get foreclosed on. OK, so what we've done now is we've sought out a high end luxury realtor in that area who's done 100 plus transactions. She's looked at it. And so what we're doing now is is she is actually going to list that property on the MLS and basically just give us a referral fee once she sells it, but we're staying under contract with Wendell so he can avoid the foreclosure. So that's the situation right now. Um, it was a, a very difficult deal and a unique deal. We're going to make a lot less money on it than what mm -hmm. we intentionally and anticipated. But the point in all of this is, is that we're helping sellers, right? Yep. And so the fact that we didn't just go through our normal inspection period and then say, hey, dude, we can't dispo this you know, terminate, we continue to work the situation and just try to help solve his problem. So I think we'll eventually get there. It's just going to take a little bit more time. So I just want to give an update on that since I saw Oregon. And so. speaking of an update on the, uh, on the closers cage matches. So after we had your guys is going on, we had two other guys. We had uh, one of them being Scotty Barons who won as the uh, next up to, to, to combat yes. against you. And so we've got to get that lined up because he has I want been to do that next week. Next week? Because he's yeah. been locking up deals left and right. That dude is killing it right now. So I want to do that next week. We actually I talked to Scotty and I said, Hey, let's let's go ahead and let's get the re you know our match together. Mm -hmm. And then I basically came down with what felt like COVID. And so I just had to reach out there and say, Look, dude, I'm I'm sorry. So all right, let's get back on the phones here. Cool. contacting list. This is not a monitored line. If you have an accident or emergency to report, please hang up and call our critical. Something tells me that ain't the right number. Uh, I agree. Now we don't have the data in these lists guys, but now what we do actually have is we, um, you have the option to get extra skip taste, skip traced data from batch with your leads. So Pretty nice. You're going to get a whole bunch of extra numbers, contact points, all that stuff. Hi, is Anastasio there? This is the wrong number. Sorry. Okay, you don't have a property on Canyon Way that you're looking to sell? No. 
Okay. Do you have any other properties that you're looking to sell? No. Okay. Thank you. Still trying to see if there might be some value there. So Liam, walk them through on that situation right there. Mm -hmm. Would you, perfect timing, right? You would have now when you purchase that lead, there will be additional phone numbers associated with that address skip trace from batch, correct? Yeah, so usually like three or four extra and let's say none of them connect, it's all bad. Or let's say that you call the person and the person picks up and they're like, I never put my stuff into a website, don't talk to me, I'm not selling. You get a refund. Just send an right. email to support at ispeedlead.com. You're going to get that money right back in. There you go. Been forwarded to so I see Avatar Media asked the average cost of these leads you're calling and are they exclusive leads? Okay, so as a customer of Speed to Lead, okay, I'm not an owner, I don't have any equity stake in it. Um, I'm, I'm a user, I'm a customer. Okay, as far as the exclusivity goes, you can buy these leads and make them exclusive, it's just going to cost you more money when you purchase them. For me personally, I don't care about them being exclusive. Exactly. That means that means nothing to me because here's the deal. Every other lead generation system that you're going to be having out there, you're going to be competing against hundreds and, and thousands of other people that are going to be cold calling, texting, direct mail, whatever it is. So why would we expect this to be any different? All this is is someone going to a website and saying, I want to sell my house. They're literally just notifying us that they want to sell. OK, and then as far as the cost goes, that's all over the map, depending on which status you're purchasing it in. Right. So if you see something in a location that you want to buy right now and you want to make it exclusive, then you're going to pay more money when you buy it new. But there's tons of leads that are available in the sales status and in the clearance status that are still just great. I mean, we had one of our students that attended the Crucible in January buy a speed to lead lead for one dollar and they made forty two thousand dollars on that and that's just one example um and so it, i think it's almost every day liam you guys are coming out with some kind of discount email that you are sending out saying like hey for the next two hours every leads twenty dollars or something right we aren't doing those quite as much, so capitalize on those when you get the opportunity. We were doing them really frequently beforehand, but then we realized that people would uh, they would only wait for discounts and not buy any other lead. And we're like, right. well, you know, then kind of in their minds, the people thought like, well, these are this are this is a cheap option, and then they kind of played it like a lottery when there were good leads coming across. And so we do them every once in a while. Don't get me wrong, but you got to capitalize on them when we do. Right. Okay. Another thing is these are all about follow-up too. Exactly. Yeah, the fortune is in the follow-up. That's exactly it. Yep. A call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. Brandy, Gunner, and Colton is not available. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press one for more options. Hey Brandy, this is RJ Bates calling about your property on Mockingbird Hill. Eduardo says, question, if you come across the lead and they say, I said, I already have a, uh, I already have already a buyer. Would you follow up or just delete the lead? Depends on if they have a contract signed already. Yep. Leave your 
Hey, Kathy, this is RJ Bates calling about your property on Dalton Drive. Uh, Reginald said, RJ, you had a contract with a SEA guy, Richmond, Indiana. Um, Liam, do you want to try to help me decipher what he's saying there? I think he's saying you had a contract with a Southeast Asian guy in Richmond, Indiana, and I'm not. I think he's just telling you that you did. Just so you know. Just so I – that's <laughs> – I'm very excited about the fact that we did that. Dude, Kibbs is not sure what's going on, but love the support for RJ. He just donated $10 to you. This is profitable finally for you, man. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he meant to do that. No, know. Kip does it all the time. He's he's a great guy. Oh, okay. There we go. <laughs> Kip loves just giving me money. Dude, that's the type of people you need in your corner. He knows you aren't making any deals happen. Kip watched every day of the 50-day challenge. Whoa, that is nuts. It was. is not available. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. Hey, William, this is RJ Bates calling you about your property on South Mead Street. If you could give me a call back. So you got COVID and had to move on, seller. Um, honestly, Reginald, I, I don't know anything about this deal, uh, to be honest with you. But sounds like maybe the deal didn't go through or something like that. But um, that sucks. Mike said, how do you determine the leads and clearance are still available? Do we just buy them and get reimbursed? Yeah, I mean, because we're not calling them on our end of the website, right? We're just generating them, and then it's up to you guys. And so then if you call them and find out that they're already under contract, then you submit for a refund. Yep. So just assume they're good until they're not. Hey, after this call, hold on one second, because I, I need to make sure. You're not on fire? No. Nah. <laughs> just give me two seconds. I'm actually going to double dial this one if they don't answer. All right. Hold on one second, guys. And in the meantime, gang, what I'm going to show you here is this is one club, everybody. So I'm putting the link in all the chats right, chats right now. And this is the single best real estate community out there, okay? This is all the right. best real estate community out there. You guys got to hop in. We do two live trainings every single day. Today, we had on our good friend Manny Cash. Yesterday, we had on Keon Razi, like the greatest SEO guy in all of real estate. We had some of the best systems guys last week. I run a bunch of the sales trainings. We have morning accountability meetings, accountability groups. And we've got about 400 people in there. And so uh, just make sure that you guys, if you want to come in and just uh, network some with some cool people, hop in. You can see, you know, we got all these people typing, putting the links in here and all this stuff, asking tons of questions, all that. So it is certainly worth it. We're going to have, you know, our live trainings tomorrow, of course. Um, tomorrow's actually my birthday. Man, I forget about that. And uh, Oh, happy birthday, man. Thank you, dude. You know what I'm doing tomorrow? Uh, you're going to buy and sell real estate? literally just that. Yep. I, I'm, I'm buying a flip and it's a hoarder house. And so we're closing on tomorrow. I'm nice. going to be spending the most of the day cleaning out a hoarder house. That's awesome, dude. <laughs> uh, when it, I'm coming on into the, the, the discord, right? What do you mean? You, you wanted me to come in and do something. That's right. Yep. Yep. You're going to come in there. I, we're going to line up a day and then you're going to come right. in and either run a, uh, a scaling training or a sales training, whatever you really want to run with. Love it. Love it. All right, Devine, D-A-V-I-N-E. How would you say it? Devine? Devin. Devin? Is there an E at the end? Divine. Yeah, Divine. Is it in Atlanta? Where is that? Bay City, Texas. Hi, I can't come to the phone. Divine. Right leave me a message i'll get back to you as soon as i can have a blessed day at the tone please record your message when you have finished recording you may hang up or press one for more options 
Hey, this is RJ Bates calling about your property at 301 Cedarville. Give me a call back at uh, 817-710-8689. So, uh, Hawks 79, yeah. So, I just released a new video on my YouTube channel about this. Okay, SMS is not dead, okay? It's just now you have to be a lot more hyper-focused and targeted with the SMS that you're sending out. That's why it's also very important to have multiple uh, marketing channels. And that's why for us, one of our solutions is, is, is speed to lead right here. I mean, this is what enables us to, to, you know, the volume that our guys were doing using SMS is now taken with placing phone calls. What I'm doing right now here live, you know, I mean, placing phone calls over and over and over again. everybody for that video i'm putting it down below so y'all can uh watch that appreciate later. that zachary says how old is your young ass up to now i'm old enough to drink hi is richard there Hey, Richard, this is RJ Bates calling about your property on Main Street. Uh, you had entered it on our website. Are you still looking to sell that property? It's already gone, buddy. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, congratulations. Did uh, somebody buy it from uh, you entering it on the website? No. Oh, uh, okay. Who who ended up buying it? Uh, an investor. How did he get in touch with you? I had some other investors come by. Uh, okay, you reached out to them? A local guy. I got gotcha. you. All right, man. Well, congratulations. I appreciate that. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Right, so he so hey, here's the funny thing about inbound leads. Okay. Wait, very clearly what he just said was, is he entered it on the website, but then he continued to reach out and he found a local investor to come out and buy his property. And I, I told Gene when he came up with the name Speed to Lead, it was a great name because speed is very important in this business, right? And so because we weren't quick enough on our end, somebody else went out there and they got it because he just continued to search until somebody was going to buy that property. And that's why somebody else got it. Time to tip a few back then. Yeah, my dad and I are going to go out to a bar. It'll be a good time. Hi, this is Debbie. Thanks for calling. I'm not able to get your call right now, but if you leave your name and number, I'll call you back as soon as I can. Thanks for calling and have a good day. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. Hey, Debbie, this is RJ Bates calling about your property on Pine Ridge could give me a call back i'd appreciate it judy come on judy RJ, do you know Keon? I do not. Oh, dude, you got to get in touch with him, man. He's the smartest guy in real estate. Easily. Nice. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. 9182840746 is not available. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. Hey, Judy, this is RJ Bates calling about your property on 77th Street. Give me a call back, 817-710-8689. Appreciate it. Um, someone on TikTok asked, what is Speed to Lead? Speed to Lead, they provide uh, inbound PPC and Facebook leads. It's a marketplace where you can go in and buy leads where people are saying, hey, I want to sell my house anywhere across the country. Just go to ispeedtolead.com and you can find more information there. And it's free to join. It's free to sign up. Yeah, it's free to join as well. So there's literally no reason to do it, not do it. 
And if you use code titanium when you sign up, you get a $50 credit. Yes, yes. Get that credit. Hello? Hey, is Cliff there? Yes, it is. Hey, Cliff, this is RJ Bates calling about your property on Sarah Myers Drive. Are you still looking to sell that property? Uh, well, we weren't actually thinking about selling it. I saw a thing on online, and I filled out the thing. It said, quick quote. And it's been a few days, and we're supposed to email us a quote. So... Well, that's uh, that's why I'm calling you right now. I'm calling to ask for some for some more information so I can give you that offer. So you said you, you said you weren't interested in selling it. You just wanted to see what the offer was going to be. We weren't planning on selling it for another two and two and a half years or so when we build our new house. But I gotcha. But the offer's good enough. You know, we're willing to make arrangements to do it sooner. So uh, I see. Well. I, I mean, I'm just going to be fully transparent with you. I'm an investor, so we're typically not going to be the highest offer. Uh, but that doesn't mean it won't necessarily be a good offer for you. It just depends on what's going on with the property. Um, I'm assuming it's your, your personal residence and you're occupying it yourself. Yep. Um, what? How would you rate the condition of the property? Uh, I'd say probably eight and a half, maybe nine out of ten. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Reason, I'd mark it a little bit low because it's kind of outdated. I mean, the, it's still got some, like, popcorn feeling stuff on it from the 80s. But, you know, there's just some things that probably want to be updated by whoever bought it. I see. What about the kitchens and bathrooms and flooring and stuff like that? Flooring is good. I just put brand new hardwood floor upstairs and downstairs. The bedrooms are carpeted. Um, new paint upstairs. Uh, we have some new appliances. Um, the countertops are probably about 15 years old. Cabinets are good. Everything in the house is good. Everything is in great shape. We put some new plumbing in. Uh, we completely remodeled the bathroom that's in the basement. Um, it's got walk-in shower, um, you know, toilet sink, everything in there. Um, so we completely, all the way down to the studs, completely remodeled the downstairs bathroom. Gotcha. Uh, downstairs at all brand new hardwood floor also um new paint downstairs there's been a lot of stuff done to it that's it's in great condition it's just like i said there's a couple things upstairs i think people will probably want to update like the ceiling or something i see so i mean just out of curiosity because i don't want to take up too much of your time and just to be real with you this sounds like i'm probably not going to be the best solution for you but I just want to ask you like just one other question and, and maybe there is something there that I can help you with. The way that our ads are run online is we're typically going after someone that has like previously done a Google search for something like refinance, new mortgage, something along the lines of showing that they're interested in selling their property. It doesn't just pick random people. So, I mean, is there an underlying reason as to why you'd want to sell? Because otherwise, I mean, just to be honest with you, it sounds like the best option would be probably to list on the MLS with a realtor. They're probably going to get you more money than what I would be willing to offer. Uh, no, there's not really any underlying issue. Just I saw you on Facebook as I was going through. I just clicked it. Gotcha. So, okay. Well, to be honest with you, man, I mean, I – it sounds to me, I what I do is I try to help people when there's some kind of underlying motivation and they need to sell either because the property is physically distressed or because they're personally like uh, financially distressed. So there's an underlying reason why they need to sell quickly. And just to be real with you, the, your best option is probably going to be this to list this with a with a realtor. They're going to be able to maximize your value on this. And with the way today's market is, I, I'll just be real with you. You're probably going to be able to get more money out of that property today than you will two and a half years from now. So I would say to, if you're looking to sell, to now's the time to do it. So We kind of thought that as well. The only, the only reason we haven't went that route of actually listing it is because we're not going to be ready to build for about two, two and a half years because my wife's a travel nurse. Right. We're traveling from the U.S. with our baby. So when we come home, we kind of want a place to stay. So we'd be renting somewhere and the cost of rent over the next two and a half years combined subtracted from what we would probably get out of the house now. Would that right. Be enough to not wait two and a half years. And there's no way to really 
say what the house will be worth in two and a half years. Agreed. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm just saying at some point in time, we're we're full throttle ahead on the appreciation and, and what's happening inside these these local individual real estate markets. You know, I was looking at a, a property today in a very small town in, in Northwest Ohio, and it's not even listed yet. It's just coming soon. And they already have 60 plus scheduled showings and they already have multiple sight unseen offers waiving the inspection and the appraisal difference and, and everything. So, I mean, at that point in time, it's just like, I, how much further up can we go from here? You know, I mean, this is just a small little town and, and it's just, it's full throttle, you know? So I just, for personally, for someone who's in this and I do this all day, every day, it just feels like we're, we're breaching the point where there has to be some, some kind of comeback down from where we are today. Yeah. 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 All right, man. Well, uh, you know, Sorry, I can't be the best solution for you, but I appreciate your time and best luck with uh, you know you and your wife's decision there. No problem. All right, bye bye. So, could be a slightly unpopular decision there on my part, but listen, I I very um, passionate about the fact that what we are attempting to do is exactly what I just said solve someone's problem right this gentleman is in a position right now in his life where he owns a property he's wanting to sell that property capitalize on the equity and the appreciation that he's gotten he wants to sell that he wants to go build he's just exploring to see i'm not open door i'm not orchard i'm not offer pad i'm not the guy to solve his problem there's no reason for me to make a creative finance offer right there um, because that's not what he's looking to do. He's looking to capture that equity and turn around and put it into a new build. Um, the cash offer is is not on the table there because, you know, I would just be basically um, stealing equity and that's not what I do. So uh, could be a slightly unpopular opinion to some to, to just walk away from that. But I feel like just telling the guy the truth. I'm not your best solution. What'd you think, Liam? Yeah, I can't get to the phone right now, so please leave your name and your. Would you? What would you have done there, Liam? I can't hear you, bud. Zachary asks, "When do you turn it into a creative solution?" Right. So again, uh, Zachary, go back to the crucible. You came to the crucible, okay? And and this is in day two, right? specifically talking about seller financing and then sub two, okay? I have very clear and definitive triggers for my acquisitions guys of when we make a creative financing offer, okay? Trigger number one for seller financing is they own it free and clear, okay? That's our trigger. That's when we put seller financing on the table. Outside of that, we really don't do it, okay? It makes it super easy and simple for my acquisitions guys as I'm building a large team for them to understand when to do seller financing, when not to. Sub two, we're going to have very clear and precise triggers for when we're going to look at that, okay? Low to no equity, okay, is one. So if they have no equity or very low equity, we can look at potentially doing sub two as long as we understand what our exit strategy is first, right? So what are the exit strategies that I'm looking to do? I'm looking to flip. I'm looking to hold it as a rental or I'm looking to sell it as a seller finance, okay? Decide what those are. If it's one or a couple of those, if we understand what those exit strategies are, that's when we could offer sub two if we're triggered with low to no equity. The second trigger for sub two is financial distress, okay? I'm facing foreclosure or I need X amount of dollars in my pocket to walk away from this pro property that is when we are triggered to make a subject to offer, okay? Outside of that, we're really not looking to make any creative finance offers if it's not hitting those two triggers. So that's how we do it. I'm in the exact same boat. A lot of people, you know, they try and dance around the fact that like, 
they're there to solve a very specific set of problems. And then that's how you provide the widest range of solutions to looking for those triggers, figuring out what your solution is that can match those triggers. And if there's no match for it, right? I mean, he's two, he says he's two and a half years out. There's really no point in doing a, a realtor referral because A, if with a realtor that you don't have a great relationship with, good luck tracking that referral down the line two and a half years in the future. Um, and B, the chance they're going to end up working with them just isn't worth the time of coordinating that. Right. So, I mean, you know, that, so that one got, right there, yeah. It's not I've a got deal. a couple questions here on TikTok. Someone says, what's my best option for showing a property that's occupied and you can't get inside to get pictures? So, a couple questions there. Is it tenant occupied or is it owner occupied, right? If it's owner occupied, then they should be able to just send you the pictures themselves. If it's tenant occupied and you can't get inside, then that's where you start asking questions of like, why can't you get inside? Is it because it's a non-performing uh, tenant? And so there's going to be an eviction post-closing or something along those lines. But at the end of the day, we have to be able to get inside and we have to be able to do our inspections on the property. So uh, that's that's one thing there. And then uh, Christian asked, how do you get over the over-analyzing phase? Okay. So analysis paralysis. All right. Um, I think step number one, if you want to get over, over analyzing analysis paralysis, you can go watch any of my videos on just the closer show. Okay. Just those. And you could see how quickly I move through those. Okay. You have to understand how to analyze a deal live on the phone with a seller. That's the moment of truth. And you have to be able to just make your offer right then and there. Right. Um, I, I just, you, you have to mentally go into each phone call saying to yourself, the action that I'm going to take on this phone call is, is I'm making an offer and, and I'm going to get a signed contract or I'm going to get a no. That's where I want to be. I really don't want to fall into the follow-up phase. And so let me get on a couple of more phone calls here. And hopefully I will say almost every closer show we've ever had, Liam, we got a contract. I've, I, well, I have always got a contract on every single closure show. It's always come in the second hour as well. It has. So, it has. Yeah, something about that. But yeah. me, can TikTok hear me when I talk? Yes, they can hear you. Okay, so for TikTok, to get over analysis paralysis, you just have to go out and fuck up. That's yep. it. You're going to go out. And I, I tell everybody who's afraid to get on the phones, okay, you're going to go out, you're going to make a call, and you're going to fuck it up. And you're going to look stupid and you're going to feel dumb right? That's what happens. That's just what it is. You can be the greatest closer of all time, right? But you grow into that, right? Nobody starts off like dude. a couple of years ago, RJ worked at a pizza shop. You think he was a closer then? Right. Right. Dude, my first phone call, I got so flustered. I hung up on the guy, right? I hung right. up on him. That's how Hold scared on. I got. I, I want to answer this one right here. Huh? Adam says, RJ is legit. Thank you. Uh, but based on these live samples, got to have a $300,000 a month monthly marketing budget to make this strategy work. Conversion rate got me going great. Okay, so I appreciate that. So here's the deal. I'm so far, I have a list of 25 leads, okay, that were all clearance leads, okay? On average, if you just use the promo codes that we give out for speed to lead, you're going to be paying somewhere in the range of 20 to 25 dollars for a clearance lead okay now i've gone back and i've done not the last show that i did with nick before that i did my kpis it was one out of every seven dials led to a, a contract on the closer show okay now this is with no follow-up it's just straight one dial okay so imagine if I had 25 leads here, okay? And I spent, let's just say $50. How much is that, Liam? 50 times 25. What is that? A thousand something? Let's call it $1,500. Cool. So I spent $1,500 on these leads, okay? I have the ability to call them. I have the ability to text them. I have the ability to email them. I have the ability to call several phone numbers with it. I'm following up with them constantly, and every single one of these shows, I've been able to get a contract. So where I understand where you're coming from, Adam, because it can feel that way, what you're seeing on this show is not a real-life example of what we do all day, every day in this office, right? It's all about the follow-up. That's, that's what I was saying earlier. 
It can't just be this one dial. Who knows what they're doing in their life right now? What if I just called Michael and Michael was taking a shit? Like, okay, so because Michael's taking a poop, I mean, I now I say it's a wasted lead. No, the guy's got a shit at some point in time in his life, and it just happened to be when I called. That's just one of many examples. So, didn't somebody at your crucible buy one like a one dollar lead and made forty thousand profit off of it? Yes, literally. <laughs> and, and, and obviously, and that's the, that's the exception, not the rule. But like, completely virtual. They're based out of Pennsylvania. They bought a lead in Arkansas, and it was in bumfuck nowhere, Arkansas. By the way. I mean, literally when they told me, called me about the deal, I was like, why did you buy this lead? And they were like, because it was a dollar. Fuck it. Why not? And then fuck it. They made $40,000. So, all right. Love me jaw jacking. Let's jaw jack with a seller and make money. Jim said, how do you legally get referral fee if not licensed? It's a marketing fee, not a referral fee then. It's a marketing fee. You can charge marketing fees. Your call has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. Eight, three, two, four, zero, one, four, seven, nine, two is not available. At the tone, please record your message. When you've finished recording, you may hang up or press one for more options. Hey, Daniel, this is RJ Bates calling about your property on Terry Tap or Perry Tap. Sorry. Uh, if you could give me a call back at 817. 817- Seven one zero eight six eight nine. Appreciate it. Hello. Hi, is Kim there? That's me. Hey, Kim. This is R.J. Bates calling about your property on Aiden Street. Um, you. Oh. You had entered it on our website. Are you still looking to sell that property? Yes, I am. Excellent. How much are you looking to get for that property? I am not really sure, sir. Okay. Well, can you tell me a little bit about what's going on with the property? Well, I've got renters in there now. <clears throat> Excuse me, but I'm just tired of being a, a homeowner for it. I, it's the house I grew up in. And... I had the uh, contract for deed people in there for five years, and then they didn't do any upkeep. So when they left, I had a water main break and put in a new hot water heater, water main fixed that. Then I had to fix the uh, central air, my new motor in that. And then I had to repair part of the roof. So we got all that taken care of. And, oh, hold on just a second. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. No worries. But, but, um, I, uh, I'm just tired. It, it needs, it needs, there was a tree that fell and they dropped the trees. They had them take it down and, and a couple other ones and they just dropped them. They didn't have them take it up. So it's got done. Yard work needs to be done. And just little stuff. I mean, you know, carpet and cabinets and stuff like that would be good to put back in it. But, um, I mean, it's livable and it's it's fine right now. Uh, and But they're having a hard time paying the rent, and I'm just tired. I understand. How much are they paying a month in rent? $720. $720. Okay. So I'm trying to look up property details. Um, do you know the square footage of the, the house itself? Not exactly. I'd say it's um, three, 4,000 square feet. It's it's a big house. I see. It, had, it, it dad um, <clears throat> built on a huge bedroom for him. And then the bathroom is huge. It's as huge as the living room. The living room is the whole center of the main house. Um, big kitchen, 
three bedrooms and two uh, garages. One um, one's a two car garage and one's a single car, and they're both attached to the house itself. So it's a big house. And it's got a full basement. Okay. And is it sitting on 10 acres? Yes, it is. I see. Okay. And how long ago was the, the actual house? When was that built? I'd say 1940s. That is it was, crazy because there's no information on it on any of the sites that I normally pull information on. It shows me that it's 10 acres, but it doesn't say anything about the house. When I look up like on Zillow, have you ever looked up the property on Zillow before? Yeah, I have. It just shows a cornfield. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, where's the house? And I'm like, I obviously you're telling me that there's a tenant there. So I know there has to be a property, but it's the same on Trulia and Realtor.com. And then some of the other sites that I use internally I, I don't see anything there so that's that's kind of crazy it was yeah, built in the back in the 40s the property. i see okay all right so they're paying 720 dollars a month do you have an underlying mortgage on this or do you own it free and clear yeah, free and clear okay so a couple of things um i i can do a couple of things here i can make you a cash offer on the property um, the other thing is, is if you're not needing a substantial lump sum of cash, um, I could offer, also make you an offer where you sell or finance it and you become the bank. Is that something that you would be interested in? I don't think so. Okay. So just the cash offer is what you would be interested in. I think so. I don't know how the other offer would work, honey. Well, basically the... <laughs> well, basically, because you own it free and clear, you can do whatever you want. So you're not giving me money. Uh, basically, what I would do is I would pay you monthly uh, payments plus interest like the bank does. So, you know, when when I go buy a, a, a house traditionally and Chase Bank wants to give me money, um, you know, I pay them over the course of time plus interest. You could do the same thing. The, problem, the difference there with, from you collecting rent and this is you don't have to worry about if a tree falls down or if a toilet gets clogged or anything like that because you're the bank. So you just have a lien position on the property and you just collect your, your payments every single month plus your interest. So because you've been collecting rent on this for quite some time, I, I'm assuming you kind of understand the benefits of that monthly cash flow in comparison to just one lump payment. So you would actually make more money over the course of time yeah. uh, becoming the bank. But I also understand that you might be like, listen, I just want to be done and just cash out and get my money and, and move on. Well, if it's a dependable thing every month, that's a little bit different too, you know what I mean? Well, yeah, I mean, it would, it would obviously be dependable because basically what I would be doing is I would be inheriting those tenants, right? They're going to be paying me rent. And it's my job to manage the property and deal with those tenants. And then as for me, you collect your money from me every month, no matter if the tenant pays or if there's problems with the property, it's my job to you that I have to pay you every month on time because you're my lender at that point in time. You didn't actually give me money, but what you did do is you gave me the property on a loan. And so that's where you're financing it to me. And so at that point in time, that's, listen, the, the smartest people in this world are banks, right? Who makes more money than a bank? And so that's why I, I like pitching this to people in your position uh -huh. because it allows you to make more money. And I'll just be fully transparent with you. I do this as well. So I sell or finance properties when I own them free and clear, or even sometimes when I don't. And it's some of the most profitable real estate transactions I've ever done, Kim, is when you become the bank. And so for me, I'm interested in your property. I like the idea of seller finance because you're in the position to do it because you own it free and clear. Um, but I also understand if you're like, hey, this is a little bit, you know, complicated. And, and you know, I don't know you from Adam. I just clicked on an ad and you know, the next thing you know, you're you're pitching me to become a bank. I can also just make you a straight cash offer. I, I would like to know, though, it, 
what is the idea of a price point that you have in mind there? Because I think that's the other thing is I can pay you more money if you give me seller financing than I can cash. My offer cash is going to be lower uh, because I have to go either use my own cash or I'm going to have to borrow that from a private money lender. Whereas you and I can determine those terms on seller financing between me and you. So did you have some kind of a range that you're looking for? Well, I was looking at selling just the house by itself and two acres. Okay. And what are you going to do with the other eight acres? I was just going to hold on to that for a while. Okay. I have a, a farmer that farms it for me. I see. Does Is he paying you for that? Yes. I see. You're a very smart woman. I, funny enough, I'm listening. So every morning when I wake up, Kim, I listen to an audible book. Okay. Mm -hmm. This morning, I just started a book about how you can cash flow on rural vacant land. And the first chapter was talking about timberland. And then the second chapter was talking about farmland. And basically he's, he was basically explaining what you just said. You own the land and the farmers basically paying you rent to farm the land themselves, right? Because they just need the land to be able to do whatever they do. So that's a that's a very intelligent thing that you're doing there. So you want to keep you want to keep that because you don't have to worry about the farmer paying you the monthly rent, right? Well, he doesn't pay me monthly. <clears throat> okay. He pays me a percentage of the crop. Woo! Look at that. I'm okay. So maybe you are, you might be more interested in this seller financing because yeah. you're, you're, you're very savvy here. You, <laughs> you, you like making money. I like this. This is, you're the kind of person I like to talk to. So basically on the, on the seller financing, um, you know, if I'm getting two acres there, that's not a, it. How does that work? Because you said the house is on the far North end of the, the property. He is all everything that he's doing. Is it on the west side of the property? South side. South side. Okay. Yeah. I see. So it's a long strip of land, you know, the, the 10 acres or like two acres side by side, uh, horizontal. Right. But I, I would still have. I've not, I've not decided yet. I may want to sell all of it together. I'm not sure. I just, I don't know. I just need more information and more to need more to know, you know? Right. I mean, so what, as far as dollars and cents wise, what would make sense to you to say, Hey, I, I want to sell all of this. I don't know. I tell you what, can you call me back? We're having a thunderstorm here right now. Yes, ma'am. I, I need to get off. I need to get off the phone. Yes, ma'am. When can I call you? Why don't you give me about a couple hours? Okay. So call you back about 730? That'd be good. Okay. I'll call you then. Thank you. Bye-bye. Fuck. Fuck. You think you scared her off a little bit? No. I think there's actually a fucking thunderstorm. Damn. That would have been it. That would have been it right there, man. She was hooked. <sighs> Golly, man. I think she wants to do the seller finance. I think the problem is... She's, <laughs> I honestly think she wants to sell the property and she just legitimately doesn't know what to sell it for. And I can't blame her because if you look anywhere online, it doesn't exist. Like it, <laughs> the land exists, but no matter where you look, there is no house. I looked on Zillow, Trulia, Realtor, Batch, PropStream, Propelio. I mean, I don't, I mean, I get, I guess I could go to, to County Records. But that's not going to tell me anything other than the square footage of the house, which she already told me. She said somewhere between three to 4,000 square feet, which is a monster. Could you imagine renting a property that's 4,000 square feet for $720 a month on acreage? That's middle of nowhere. That's the only thing I can think. I mean, it is. It is literally in the middle of nowhere. You know what? Why don't you know? Have you now that you're a Tiki Talk star? Why don't you? Do you know about those content houses they do out in California? You no. know, they get all those like young kids who are popping off on TikTok and they start a content house where they all go make, you know, videos together. 
Listen, okay, Liam, I got to tell you a funny story, okay? Okay. I, I have an opportunity coming my way, okay? And and so they want to do a background check on me about something, okay? Mm-hmm. And one of the background checks they had to do on me was on my social media. Yeah. And so one of the things they had to search was the videos that I liked on TikTok. Oh, no. And so I went, I didn't even know that what I had to even do it. And I went and I changed the settings so everyone could see all the videos that I liked. And while I did it, I was like, well, hold on. I'm going to scroll through here and see what all the videos I've liked <laughs> were, right? 98% of the videos I've liked are my own videos, just me trying to boost my own algorithm. Okay, I'm I was like, 2%. I, yeah, I, I'm like, I, the other 2% were like Cassie's and uh, Nicole Espinosa's. And that's okay, like thank God. <laughs> you should see jeans like uh, videos, man. Yeah, yeah. There were some, uh, there were some hockey videos of like some big hockey checks because I'm a hockey fan. But um, mm-hmm. anyways, I... I, man, I really want that call to go down live. I think what I'm about to do, Liam, is when I call her back here in a couple hours, um, I'm going to have to record that so we can get it because I'm going to get that locked down. I, I am telling you. I can feel it in my bones. So, Oh, guys, and so, so one thing I wanted to just kind of uh, get a pulse on the community for here is we want to do like a really big giveaway with Speed to Lead. And so what we're thinking about doing is if we had you guys make the funniest home-cooked ad, we would be giving away $5,000 in speed to lead credits. So that's like, you know, dollar for dollar right there. $5,000 in speed to lead credit for whoever comes up with the best home-cooked super ratchet advertisement. And then we'll run that ad too. I like it. If like you guys it. like that, just put one in whatever whatever platform you're viewing this on. Just put one. Okay. One. All right. So here's the – here's the, someone on TikTok just told me to do something. This is going to prove whether or not I get the deal. Okay, Liam? Are you ready for it? I'm ready. I'm taking her address. I'm putting it into weather.com to see if there's actually a thunderstorm. <laughs> At her address. Okay? Dude, who's this guy on TikTok? Dude, genius, this was, man. Uh, this is little underscore ant 17. Little I ant like... 17 is a baller. What a G. Right? Okay. Let's see. Severe thunderstorm warning. Heavy rain. 62 degrees. Oh, it's it's all orange and red. We're good, baby. We're good. There you go, man. No, her I'm, house is about I'm to get blown down. this bad right boy down. Yep. Yes. There we go. All right, we're good. That was that was great thinking there. Uh, I love the the intuition there. All right, so um, I am I am out of leads that Liam gave oh, me. Oh, yo, let this. me throw some more in there, bro. If you well, want to keep going, we got. Yeah, it. yeah, keep going. But what I'm gonna do is in the meantime is. I'm going to really piss off one of my acquisitions guys because I'm going to call one of his leads. Oh, there we from, go. From Speed Lead, and I'm going to close it. Okay. So let me let me just see here real quick. While, while you dump some more in there, I'm going to yep. try to get something here. Okay. Um, this sounds fun. Grizzly Flats. I've never heard of this place. All right. Go dump a good bit more in there. I think that might be the most perfect example of a tired landlord. Uh, yeah. She, she, said, she says, I'm just tired. Zero, three. <laughs> she, she literally was saying it. Yeah. I, I'm just tired. I don't want to do it anymore. Dude, if you're a tired landlord, like, you know, core seller, man, that's like a perfect phone call, right? You want people like that to be picking up the phone? Hop in my course, guys. Love it. Your call has been forwarded to him. Damn it. I want phone conversations. You can't piss off your acquisition guy. Oh.
E R O L. Your call has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. I didn't have to. I didn't have to try to pronounce it. E R O L. How would That's you have said it? Errol. Errol. That's what I'm thinking. Dude, I'm I'm coming to you for all of my future uh, needing to understand how to pronounce people's names. I would have said e e roll. I guess I would have just butchered it. <laughs> You guys are in Texas. You don't have to pronounce anything right. Dude, what was up with that guy saying I was a Yankee? Right, dude? No, he called you out right away. I'm like, I've never been called that in my entire life. Bro, you sound as far from a Yankee as possible. I'm not even really yeah, – great. <laughs> hey, hello, this is RJ. Like, you can't get further off. Oh, my goodness. James. Let me let me call out Royce right now. And forwarded to an Royce! Emilio said, I'm going to be on Kang's YouTube channel for first wholesale deal. Bro, that's nuts. Are you actually? It's crazy. Uh, James, we're, don't worry. We're going to get rip, okay? That's what we call Royce around here. I got you. He's on a pressing call right now. I see. <laughs> Apparently, Royce didn't call someone back on TikTok about a property. He said, poor customer service. So I'm, call has been forwarded to an automated voice So I'm going to stone cold stun rip when he walks in here. What? What is this? Royce was supposed to call me back and never did. Poor customer service. James Weldon. Look at you. I did call him back. He's upset because we don't want to buy his house. James, are you upset because we don't want to buy your house? I understand. I don't want you to be mad at us, but it don't always work out. He says he's going to call you. He's got to rebuild some rapport, baby. I think James is uh, someone that came from TikTok. It's a listen, Liam. No one can ever say that these shows are not as real and transparent as they could possibly be. Even Nobody when someone gets yeah. mad at us on TikTok, we still call out the people in the office. I appreciate him letting me know. You want a uh, you want a private stock? Fuck yeah, let's do it. All right. After I close this bubbling, hey, is that? Uh, oh. Damn. <laughs> Damn. Damn. They wanted to know if Rip's packing in the office. Well, there's a reason why we call him Rip. Okay. So, yeah. When you come in the office, you're either supposed to be here or Rip takes you to the train station. Okay. Oh, fuck. <laughs> That's my favorite part of the, the intro. Jeans private stock, motherfuckers. I don't really like my uh, my my part of the intro. And we're live. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like a goober. Uh. Please leave your message for. Hey, is this uh, Willie? Just calling about your property there on, uh, where are we calling from? What am I doing? Well, I lost where I was on my little uh, internet here. It went out, but uh, I think it was a property in Milwaukee. I'm calling to buy that one. Give well, me a call back. If you, if you, if you, you can check the private chat. 8689. Thank you. If you check the private chat, we do got a uh, Salt that Lake City, Utah. Epic, that was the most epic voicemail ever left. In the history of live voicemails left, Liam. That's definitely going to lead to closing right there. What were, do you you leaving, think? were you leaving a voicemail right there? That was me leaving a, an actual voicemail. I actually forgot what the fuck I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't see around my cell phone that's set up for TikTok. And I'm oh, like, what, no. what, what am I calling on? <laughs> 
James, bud, we, we called him out. He said he's going to call you. <laughs> James is very mad at Royce. How about hey, this, dude. James? I'll have someone else from my team call you about your property. So that way you don't have to deal with Royce anymore. I'm dude. sorry that, that Royce didn't do what you wanted him to do, but I'm going to get that thing here for you. Okay. And then you've got me talking in the background too, talking about we got the private stock in there. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Party you, are trying to you gave me a lead in Utah? Yeah, bro, um, Salt, Salt Lake City. Liam, you know how I feel about... You don't like Mormons? Um, <laughs> do you know what the phrase derfing is? Derfing, right? I know soaking. <laughs> I don't know derfing. <laughs> oh, my God. Is this something we can cover on the Closer Show, or I mean... No. <laughs> I'm Googling it. <laughs> In a private browser, though. <laughs> yes. Oh, I don't like that, man. Uh, can you hang out like 20 minutes? Yeah. Your call has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. Another good one for you from Utah is soaking. It's not available. <laughs> At the tone, please record your message. When you've finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. To leave a callback number, press 5. Hey, this is RJ Bates calling you about your property on SunDrive. You had entered it on our website saying you were looking to sell that property. Just wanted to call and get some more information from you. You could give me a call back at 817-710-8689. Thank you. All right. That was that was all one lead, right? Yeah. It was. Yeah, this is all one lead. All right. Um Yeah. Somehow in our office um something happened and the phrase um derfing got <laughs> pulled to me. You guys aren't derfing in the office, are you? No. I <laughs> really wish I had never known it? what that was. <laughs> Hey, is Tommy there? Uh, sorry, you have the wrong number. Oh, okay, you're not the owner of uh, 229 Raker Street? Oh, sorry, but uh, no, one, no one, that's not the address of this place. Okay, well, I, someone had entered this phone number into a website saying that they were uh, interested in selling a property. Uh, did you have a property that you were looking to sell? Yet, but we just sold it this last week. Oh, well, congratulations. I'm happy to hear that. Did it come from you clicking on that or was it from something else? Uh, um, I was, uh, we, we were uh, just clicking to see about it, something on our house and uh, it was on our house as is and stuff. And someone uh, came out and offered us an amount and ended up buying it and stuff. Nice. Well, congratulations, man. I'm happy to hear that for you. Oh, okay, man. Thank uh, you very much, man. All right. You have a great night. All right. Bye-bye. Got sold. There you go. Someone bought it. And for those of you guys who are just tuning in and didn't watch from the start, these are, our, uh, these are leads that never sold on our platform or they're very old, one or the other. Uh, Gene's comment is awesome. <laughs> this guy should be our new voiceover. Send me his number. Uh, so far, this need to speech be called slow to call. <laughs> Why not show us premium dials? Because we want to save them for you guys. Those are money right there. They're real expensive to generate. Welcome to the U.S. Cellular Voicemail. This is Brittany. How can I help you? We might be getting a call back. Ooh. Oh. Yes. Uh, let me put you through. Hold on one second. Yeah, it's one of the properties. It's not. Oh. 
What happened there? Hello, this is RJ. Hi, RJ. This is Miss Williams. How are you? I'm doing good. How about yourself? I'm doing okay. I'm She's in one of those thunderstorms. Oh yeah, that that wind is a uh, uh, real bad. Is there is there a chance you can get out of the wind for me? Seems like it's not as bad. Is it okay right now? Yes, that's much better. Okay, so you're calling about uh the property on Dalton Drive, correct? Yeah. Okay. Um are you still looking to sell that property? Yes, we are. Okay, how much were you looking? How much were you looking to get for it? But make an offer is the house and the adjoining lot. Okay. And how big is the adjoining lot? Do you know? I don't have measuring this is the southwest Belton Drive. Right. It's also under Catherine Williams. I don't have the dimensions on it. It's like I said about as far right now. Okay. Um but it is it's 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 back it's back. I gotcha. So, so you say her, uh, who is her? Is it that you're? My, my mother and I had her before, so she had the final say, so we need to I got gotcha. you. Okay, give me just a couple minutes here. How did you come up with the number uh, 325? What was that based on? Well, um, it's based on lower end commercial because everything around there is called UA school and what's called uh, MU, multi-use. Uh, you can be residential, it can be commercial, it can be you have a business in your home now, you can put a duplex, yeah, it can be apartments, whatever you choose to do with the property. I see. We have a Home Depot, um, a motel, right at the beginning of the road, where we see I-77 and I-40. Um, Home Depot at the beginning of the road, Hooters, IHOP. And several other restaurants out back and all that. That's on number one highway. And right. You turn on the right. And then you come down and there's you know, single family homes throughout there. And some empty lots. And then you get to the back. Then they have duplexes and apartments. I see. Um, I'm, I'm looking at some of the other properties that have sold around there. I, I'm not yeah, seeing... Boy, a lot of those are properties that were inherited by children that did not want them. Like they lived out of state and they just got rid of them. Okay. Uh, that's because a lot of us, a lot of our elderly, I'm like one of the few people that still live back then. <laughs> In my 50s. Um, and everything. Um, I mean, if you look at a support property, um, and you know, you know, for some reason, nobody ever pulls up the hotel that was purchased. Or the hospital, or the Home Depot is purchased around us and everything. Right. Uh, the church property. So they pull up the houses that a lot of them were just inherited by children that do not want to aggravate with it. Okay. But I, I mean, at the end of the day, I, I, the, the, all of the comparable properties that have sold around there, there, there's nothing that has sold for anywhere close to that price. I mean, not all, not all of those could be because they no, they got inherited by children. One of the houses sold for like one eighty six. It's an older home. Oh, it might be a couple years newer, but it's a smaller home. Um, that's right on the curb. Right. Um, when I say right at I seventy seven, I don't know how anybody can sleep there. Um, so, and they have less land than we get. Uh, there's less land, like I said. The house sold and smaller and Yeah. I mean, I, I'm just going to be honest with you. I appreciate you giving me a call back, but I, I'm not going to be anywhere close to that number. I mean, I just, I can't justify it. I mean, I don't see anything uh, on I paper. Mean, I mean, like I said, I mean, if you make an offer, anything's plausible. But I do know what she owes on the home, and what she owes on the home, and what uh, she had to get out to move. Right. Get, her off, you know, get another place. And... I mean, whoever purchased the land is going to be at it, especially with, you know, availability of finding other people. So, um, you know, there's a lot of availability around there for people that know what they're doing. 
Right. For extra property for a higher price. The most, the least she'll take is uh, two fifty five. I see. I mean, she wants three twenty five, but I'm telling you, the least she will take that I can talk her into is two fifty five. I I mean, just being real with you, the the literally the three comps that I have around there of similar square footage, bigger lot sizes, and newer year builds is 182 150 184. So how could I justify paying 255? Right, but how how much land is that? I mean cuz I mean we're we're cuz I mean we're 26,000 square feet smaller on lot size from the 182. But I'm talking about the lot. I mean, because you're saying it comes with an extra lot. Even if I had three lots of the same size, I still wouldn't be the same lot size of the property it sold for 182. And you're saying the least she will take is 255. I just, I'm not seeing how we're how we're ever going to see eye to eye. You can make an offer and she can accept it or not. I mean, we just uh, I know the property that I know what things are sold around there, and like I said, the hospital across the street, hotels are going up all the way and everything else. I mean, if you know how much properties are going for around there, do you have any addresses that you could give me that could show me the value? Because I'm I'm open to it as long as I can see it. But that's a hotel. I mean, what what is the what is a hotel? I don't understand the correlation between a hotel and our property. Well, I mean, well, it's one block away, two blocks away, a block and a half away. But what? It's on the same road. But what am I going to do with? How does that compare to what I'm doing? That's a hotel. Okay, she hung up. All right. No, but there's the hotel, and that that's going to raise my value because you know. You can, turn, you can turn your house into a hotel, actually, RJ. We're, we're going to build a hotel on a 10,000 square foot lot. Yeah, obviously. This is this is what is going to happen. So I'm super glad that the one callback that we got on the show was her. And the wind. She was in, I mean, she sounded like the Wicked Witch of the West when she was getting picked up with Dorothy. <laughs> All right, let's do this. <laughs> Thomas said, Hotel. Thomas said you fellas better stay away from Jersey. I've done deals in Jersey. Is, is it oh is this is this Tom? That's Tom. Tom Let me find you a like, lead in Jersey real quick, bro. Tom and I just hung out at the crucible. Let me just find you a Jersey lead. In North Carolina. I don't think I got a New Jersey lead. Hey, is Daniel there? This is him. Who's this? This is RJ Bates calling about your property on Ashwood Drive. I I saw that you had entered on one of my websites to sell it. Are you still looking to sell that property? Yeah. All right. You got to understand, it's in a fifty-five and older park. Okay. They got four hundred and fifty homes in there. Okay. They own the property. But the home that's on the property, I own. Four bedroom, two bath, living room, dining room, utility room. Uh, I put a fence around the property and I built an extra. There's two sheds that's on that property. I put new flooring in the utility room, in the kitchen, all new trim on the floor. I'm going all the way around. I put, I remodeled the other spare bathroom. Cost me almost six grand. Uh, then um, there's other things that was done around the house, but I had a painter come in and he paint the whole house in through different colors in different rooms. Uh, got a cleaning lady that's cleaning everything. I don't care what it is, she's cleaning it. Okay. So if you're interested, you know, uh, for if you want, if you know, I don't know if you want your mom and dad, 
is hunting for a place or what? Uh, or is it an investment or are you going to resell it or what? Uh, it, it would either be, it's obviously going to be an investment for me. I, it, it depends on a couple of different factors on what our exit strategy would be, whether or not we're going to hold on to it, or whether or not it's going to be something that we would resell. It, it just depends. Did you have an asking price in mind? Yeah, I paid 45, 15 years ago. I want to at least get that back out of it. Okay. Some of the homes in the park are going for over a hundred, but you know, uh, they're brand new. That's a different story. Okay. But, uh, uh, mine's been taken care of. All it needs is a outside storm door and a back door. That's all that the place really needs. Otherwise, you know, people can move right in. They walk through and check it out themselves. You know. Okay, walk me through. You said something earlier about you own the property, but someone else owns the land. Is that correct? The park. It's called Twin Lakes uh, Park. The father uh, or whoever it was, the dad, owned all the property. They put two Twin Lakes on the property and started this mobile home park. Maybe the hell, I don't know, maybe 50 years ago. And the more homes were built, more homes were built, more homes were built. Now there's over 450 homes in there. And they made it a 55 and older community just for old people. They even got security gates up front, but most of the time they don't work. But, um, that's the that's the situation. When I moved in there, I bought the home. See, I, with us living there and being grandfathered into the property, it's four hundred a month for the rent. Someone new moving in, it's seven hundred dollars a month. But it'll never go up from that point. But you know, anywhere to try to rent someplace is going to be seven hundred and up and up anyway. But at least you own the place, and you could always resell it down the road. So I'm just being straightforward with you, so you understand what's going on here. Right. You know. Okay. And anybody that moves in there or buys property, they always do a background check. You know. I said, well, if they're 55 and older, what do you think that they are, bank robbers or what? You know, so most of the time they still give you a background check. I heck, I know. I mean, if you're 65 years old, what are you going to do? They give you a background check. It don't make a difference. Right. So you take that in consideration. I was, like I said, I go down to 40. But after all these years and putting all and all this stuff, a lot of this stuff has been done recently. New flooring, paint everywhere. Uh, I forget there was that new bathroom that was put in. The ceilings we had the ceilings redone because you know uh, after so long you got to do something with them ceilings or else you repaint them one or the other. Because, you know, dirt flies out of your vents for your AC and for your heat. So you got to take care of that stuff. So, Okay, I just want to make sure I understand this just so we're on the same page because I, I appreciate you being fully transparent about the situation. And so I just want to make sure I understand. You are renting the, the spot, the, the dirt itself. And right now you're paying four hundred something a month, but if I were to purchase it, I would need to pay seven hundred dollars a month. Right. If you moved in, that's a they that's the stupidest thing that they ever did. They put it in the agreement on the lease. You sign a lease every year, once a year. When the new year comes around, they pass around leases and people sign them. Some people have built garages right next to their homes. Some people have built big double garages. Some people have built 
where a person could live up above there. Matter of fact, they did it. But they fought these people in court for a long, long time. But now you can build a garage right next to your place without no hassle. I tried to, you know, that was different owners back then. Now, since it's different and uh, a company called Legacy has bought the homes and they're a pretty big outfit. They own a lot of mobile home parks. They're out of Arizona and Nevada, I think. But uh, they seem to be taking care of the place pretty good. They just uh, raised the damn rent, that's all. I think they probably raised it everywhere. I see. Um, unfortunately, that makes it a, a real tricky situation for us. I mean, right. I understand. I mean, that's that's tough. Um, let me let me ask you: Are you wanting to move? Or are you wanting to stay there? No, I've already moved out. I bought another place. So it's because it's just my, sitting my vacant. Wife, my wife's handicapped; she can't get up and down steps. So well, I moved into a place that don't have any damp steps. And I started uh, fixing up the place last year. And I said, eventually, I'll resell it. That's what I'm doing. I see. It's completely open. Like I said, somebody can move right in. Do you owe anything on it? You own it free and clear, right? Oh, I paid cash for, for both the places. I don't owe anything on any place. How much uh, do you think it could rent for? Uh, well, if you find somebody that could move in there, you could probably get uh, eight fifty, nine hundred out of it, maybe a thousand. I don't know. It matters what what situation that these people are in. You know, if they need one, uh, automatically emergency light, and they they live near the area. Uh, I don't think you'd have people. Well, you never know. People sometimes people might relocate, but uh, it would have to be somebody that's hunt for in the area, at least maybe around Cleveland or you know suburbs, whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Huh. I never even thought about putting a hat in because see, they have to run this background check on people. But that's a benefit for you. Like, honestly, man, if I were you, you own it free and clear, but you're paying this, you know, $400 a month, but you've got the golden ticket with the $400 a month. For anybody else, we have to pay $700 a month. If you could get someone to move in, think about it. The, the owners of the land are going to do the background check for you on your potential tenants. And they're basically going to make sure that you get a good tenant and you could be making $450, $500 a month off of this. Right. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I think that's a better situation for you. And I think that's the best situation for this piece of real estate. I mean, if I were to come in and buy this, I, I can't really do anything with it because I'm only going to be making $150, $200 a month. But you could be making four hundred fifty, five hundred dollars a month. I think that's a, a great situation for you. And if you don't need the cash right now, you know, because you're saying forty thousand dollars. I see what you see. I mean, in the area, I see houses in you know anywhere from sixty five thousand to to forty to thirty eight thousand is what I see in there. I think you're shortchanging yourself if you sell it for forty thousand dollars cash. I think you should rent it out and make four or five hundred dollars a month. Well, I was thinking about that. I was even thinking about that about the place that I moved into. We found a big double home over in Lorain, Ohio, and if it wasn't for the steps, this place would have been a beautiful place. But see, my wife has issues with her knees, and she can't get up steps. I mean, it's very, she would have to crawl up that step. Right. So that's the reason that I moved out. I said, listen, if and at that time, they wouldn't let me build a garage next to it and, and extend the driveway. I said, what's the reason that you won't let me extend the driveway and uh, put a garage over there? You'll take up too much green. I said, pardon me? What'd you say? 
we don't take up too much grass. I said, you kiss my ass. And I turned around. <laughs> that didn't make no damn difference. No sense to me. I said, what in the hell are they talking about? I come back and told my wife. I said, them people up there is crazy as hell. Yeah. So, you know, and plus, uh, that was, see, they went through like four different owners. Now, these people that own it now, they're laid back because they're in a different state. They're not, they don't own it and live there. They don't own it and live in the suburbs. They live it 2,000 miles away. You know what I mean? Right. So they hire people to manage it that live near or are qualified, you know? I see. So at least it's somebody local that understands the situation. I understand. Well, Daniel, I, I like I said, man, I think the best thing that I could offer to you would just be my my wisdom when it comes to real estate and just trying to to give you put you in the best situation possible. And I think in this particular deal, I would tell you what I would do if I were you is I would keep this and I would rent it out and I would make that monthly cash flow. I think over the course of time, that's well, going to make you a lot more money than just selling it that one deal. Details, no renting. Ah, okay. Well, then that kills that deal. I mean, honestly. Right. And, and it, the, just, uh, I tried to sneak a friend of mine in. She's uh, uh, 50. And I tried to sneak her in and say that she was buying the place and get her and her husband in there and let them pay monthly. Right. They wouldn't let her in because she was four and a half years too young. I get it, man. I said, this is bullshit. So, All right, Daniel. Well, I appreciate your time, man. I, I don't think I'm going to be the, the best solution for you on this. I just, yeah, I don't yeah, think I, I could do anything with it. So, I know. All right. You take care. All man. right, Daniel. Have a great night. Bye-bye. Wah, wah, wah. Fuck, bro. Why am I getting weird ones tonight? I know, man. Everything, it's like, there's like, ding, 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 ding. All right. Just all of a sudden doesn't work. We've gotten commercial. Some woman that wanted me to tear down her house and build a hotel. A house that didn't exist on 10 acres. Hello. Hey, is Kirby there? Yes, Kirby. Hey, Kirby. This is RJ Bates calling you about your property in Stanfield. Um, you had entered it on our website saying that you were looking to sell that property. Are you still looking to sell it? Sold it. Sold it. Well, congratulations. Did you get what you wanted out of it? I did. All right, man. Well, congratulations. Uh, appreciate you answering, and uh, we'll take you off our list, okay? You have a great day, sir. You too. Bye-bye. Hey, Liam. Yes, sir. Are people saying that these leads are working? What do you mean by I mean, that? How many, how many times have we called tonight and the sellers told us, yeah, I entered it and someone bought my house? Oh, yeah, yeah, dude. I hear I that mean, all the time. I mean, on all these. I mean, these are these are proof right here that, hey, people are getting <laughs> these deals from these leads. Well, I remember, you know, one thing, too, is we, we get – we on the back end, we get complaints because people only come in by sale and clearance leads because they don't want to take the jump on the new leads. And they're like, well, these are already sold. These aren't good. Well, somebody else bought it and already closed it. You late to the party. These are PPC leads on ispeedtolead.com. Someone asked on TikTok. Use promo code titanium and you get a $50 credit. Yes, sir. We like those credits has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. All right. So you gave me a lead. Um, in New, New Jersey, but there's no phone number. Oh, damn. All right. Who have I not talked to here? I didn't talk to a Brandon. How is there no phone number? I've never seen that. That's so weird. Hey, is Brandon there? Uh, who's calling? 
Uh, my name's RJ Bates. I was calling uh, about your property at 208 Congress Street. You had uh, entered in our website saying you were looking to sell that property. Are you still looking to sell? Yeah, I'd like to sell that property, and I have two others that I'm selling as well. Excellent. Okay. Specifically, the one at 208 Congress. How much are you looking to get for that one? If it's a cash deal, uh, 105. Okay. And is that property tenant occupied, owner occupied, vacant? What's going on with it? Three units, tenant occupied, fully occupied right now. Okay. And what's the, the monthly rent on that? Uh, that comes out to, I'm going by, by memory here. Hold on. I got about 2200 a month. Okay. And then those tenants, they're they're good. They're paying. They're up to date. Not no no funny business going on there. No, those are good tenants. I'm very very picky about who I rent to. Uh, I do a criminal background check on folks, and I also do a background check that uh, indicates if they've had any civil complaints in the state of Pennsylvania. So. Yeah. All my tenants, yeah, I'd rather leave a, a place sit vacant for three or four months. In fact, I have until I found the right tenant before. So I see. All right. That's a, a pretty awesome looking property there. Uh, what was the last time like some remodeling was done to it? What's the condition like on the inside? got long-term tenants so you know i haven't gone in and actually done re any type of remodeling every time somebody leaves i go in and you know fix what any anything that might need fixed but right now it doesn't mean anything i did put uh let's see one two well all, all the bathrooms i redid about seven or eight years ago maybe 10 years ago i did all the bathrooms and um Let's see. I'm just trying to remember. You know, it's it's been since I did remodeling. It's probably been eight or nine, ten years on them. But you know, I paint them and keep them looking nice. Okay. All right. So definitely interested in that. Um, what's the what's the next one? You know what might be what might be easier is I have an entire list of all the properties with photographs if you'd like me to uh email them to you it might be easier that way so i i yeah i mean i i just don't want to get off the phone because i'm i'm like super interested so um is there any way you can send it we stay on the phone yeah i gotta get to my um i gotta get over to my computer real quick i was in the other part of the house you gotta give me a couple minutes but uh, that's okay i see i see the pictures on congress street i saw the ones on zillow um it looks like you've done uh you know obviously some exterior paint to it and you know i see what that looks like and i think i'm good to i think i'm good to go on that one um how many other properties did you say you were interested in selling One's a single family and the other is a duplex. All right. Duplex. What's the price you want on that one? If it's a cash deal, 65. Okay, 65. And how much is that rented for? Okay, and then the single family is that uh, tenant occupied as well? Yeah, that's tenant occupied. I'm putting a new tenant in there at the beginning of actually April. Uh, that's eight fifty a month on that. Eight fifty, and how much do you want for that one? <laughs> the single single family. Um, I think it was 45 that I had it for. I, I'm going, I got to look at my list. Okay. I think it's 45 I was going for in that. All right. So I get a, uh, what's my buy two, get one free discount? 
you give me a uh, you give me a deal that I can't refuse. Um, it's reasonable. We'll work it out. Cash deal. I want to sell them because we we want to get out of the tundra, man. It snows here. It's too cold. I'm sick of the snow. And we want to go south. So that's really my own only reason for selling them. I see. Uh, you know, they're owned outright. I've got no mortgage on them. The one thing is, is that I'm requiring any buyer to go through my, my real estate agent. She's charging me 3% if I bring her the buyer. And um, I will pick up the realtor costs if the buyer is willing to pick up the other costs. Okay. I mean, I don't have a problem with that um, whatsoever. Well, it's important to tell you that because I've had other people... I tried to put a deal together, and the second my agent has sent them over the the uh, seller slash buyer agreement, it's been crickets, man. You know, they they don't want to commit and send in a deposit or anything like that. So, I just want to be upfront and forward on um, on what experience I've had dealing with other people. I see, and that's why I'm, you know. I had somebody send me over a, 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 an agreement and I looked it over and I'm like, Ugh. I sent it to my attorney and he looked it over and he's like, no, nope, don't use this agreement. So, you know. Okay. So you, be careful. so you want to use your own agreement. Okay. And then you want to use your realtor, right? Well, the agreement is basically going to be the standard. Uh, right. The standard agreement that, that she uses here in Pennsylvania. Okay. Yep, and that's it. And she'll and she'll, you know, she has a title company and all of that. Yeah, you know, I don't know if you have a title company you guys work, but that would be something that you would work out with her, not me, you know. That's yeah, that's that's fine. We can use your title company. Let me ask you, because do you are you only wanting a cash transaction or would you be interested in seller financing? No, I don't want to carry a mortgage. Okay, so you just want cash. All right. I'd rather just, just sell it, yeah. If I would you be willing to do 185 if I take all three of them? Uh, I got to think about that for a second, okay? Let me just uh see what we're talking about here. Okay? Uh Give me a second. Okay? So my price combined was two twenty for all three of them. I think that's the number I gave you. Uh, I I added it up to two fifteen. Two fifteen. Two fifteen. My my math might have been wrong. Right. So. Uh, and you're saying what? How much did you say? I'm saying one eighty five. I'm okay with the the sixty five on the duplex. I wanted to do 30 on the single family and I want to do 90 on the, the triplex. Um, the single family, uh, I just this week, actually today I was right in the middle of building a new front porch on it. Okay. And um, I'm going to be finishing that up this week. And so I I just put that on. Um, in the pictures, you can see it needs a new – well, you haven't looked at the pictures, but it does need a new front porch. So um, I have to recoup my investment on that porch. Okay. Um, so I would say – I'd say 35 Okay. And I would be good. So thir be good at that. 35 on the single family. Okay. Yeah. And then on the duplex, I was good at 65, which was your price. So we're good there. Yeah. And then on the triplex, I wanted 90. Mm. That's 20 grand. I had you at 105. Is that not the number you said? Nah. Did I say 105 or 
110. You said 105 if it was a cash deal. 105. I could do 93 on that. Okay, 93. So all together, 93, 65, and 35. Yeah. Okay. But you want your realtor to write up the contract, right? Yeah, but I'll pick up paying her fees. She'll write up the contract, send it to you. Um, my wife is also on the deed, so of course my wife would be signing as well. And um, typically, do you usually pick up the other fees, or how do you like to do that? Yeah, so I cover all the closing costs minus your prorated taxes and minus your realtor commissions. Yep, that's not an issue. Yep. Um, Not a problem at all. Now, are you familiar with the area that I live in? I mean, roughly. I mean, I'm, I'm from Texas, so I yes and no. I mean... I'm familiar enough with it from a real estate standpoint. Yes, sir. What part of Texas are you in? I'm in Fort Worth, Texas. Yeah, my son, he lives in Houston. He uh, he moved out there a few years ago. His wife works on, as a cop at Houston PD. And uh, he keeps sending me messages when it's 25 degrees here. He's like, yep. Yeah. 80 degrees and beautiful here. <laughs> well, you said you wanted to move south. Where do you want to move to? Well, we might move to Texas. <laughs> hey. You know, we don't know yet. If you move to Texas, uh, I I own a brokerage here, and so we can help you uh, find properties down here, and we can be your, your licensed realtor here to help you find whatever it is you're looking for. Well, that would be uh, something that we can entertain. I definitely, uh, you know, among these three properties I just talked about, I have a commercial building with uh, three commercial spots and three residential apartments. And um, I have some work to do on that before I'm selling that. I have to run a, I have to do a total renovation to one of the commercial spots and put some windows in. And then I have another property. See, I've been buying and flipping properties over the last about the last seven or eight years, I've bought and sold a lot of properties in this area. There you go. I've been doing this for, for seven, eight years myself. I started in late 2014, and I went full-time January 1st of 2015. Good deal, man. I'm glad to hear that, that that's working for you then. Yeah, man. This is yeah. uh, this is my passion. That's why I'm still doing this at 6.15 at night, you know? This is the, the time that uh, you get people on the phone and you're able to, to make win-win situations, you know? So, well, listen, you can't, make, you can't make the type of money in the stock market unless you get really lucky that you can in real estate. Right. Your, your best long-term investment is real estate. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that, for sure. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, like, you didn't even give me the address of the duplex of the single family. And I don't really care because I'm looking at it from a cash flow perspective. So I'm looking at, you know, I can see what you've done here on the triplex. I see the condition that it's in. Also, I have confidence based off of what you're telling me with, you know, you have good long-term tenants. You're doing solid background checks. You're making sure that you have the right people in there. So I'm looking at this saying, hey, this is an opportunity for me to come in and have a, a instant cash flow with these deals. That's what I'm looking for. You know about that. You're a landlord. Um, and then also there might be an opportunity for me to buy more properties from you down the road and, and also help you move down here to Texas if that's uh, something that you want to do. Uh, you don't know. I might even be able to find some properties out here for you, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Know. Absolutely. Uh, well, let's do this. So, um, I can get you, you know, it, it would be helpful if I send you whatever you need, you know. So what do you need from me? I think, um, why don't I send you over my email? I'll text that over to you. And then I'll text you over my entity that I want on the contract. Let's go ahead and have your realtor send over the contracts to me. Okay. Okay. And then before, while she's writing up those contracts, go ahead and send me the address and the, the pictures that you have of the, the single family, the duplex. And if you have more of the triplex, go ahead and send those over as well. And uh, once she sends over those contracts, I'll be good to go and, and get them signed. Okay, so 
you know, I'm going to require a good faith deposit. Yep. Uh, be set in also. Typically, something like this, I'd like to see at least $1,000 per property. Okay. So we would require that. That will all be spelled out in the contract that um, my, uh, my real estate agent, who is Tiffany Burgess, um, will send you. She's a very good agent in town. I've done a few properties with her. Um, and I just want to use her because I also believe it's important to feed your small business owner as well. I, I couldn't agree more. My parents have been entrepreneurs since the early 90s, and then I, I picked up right right where they left off. And so uh, I appreciate that mindset. And, uh, you know, I, I don't mind doing business with uh, with good people in the local community. So I have no problem with that whatsoever. What's your first name, sir? My name is RJ. RJ, okay. Yes, sir. What's that stand for, RJ? Robert John. Robert John. All right. Um and then uh, when you send over your message to me, send the address um, as well. Yes, sir. That can go on the contract. And then um, I will call Tiffany as soon as I get off the phone with you and talk with her and give her a heads up that I'll be sending over that information um, for her to uh... – excuse me. I'm sorry. I am got a little distracted here. No worries. For her to um... – get everything over to you okay okay yeah. i'll get that sent over to you here in probably the next uh 10 15 minutes okay yeah and, you know i'm gonna put in um my write-up for you i'll put everything that i know needs to be addressed on those properties so that you have that available because you know any property is going to need something addressed on yes sir but i I'll also put what i've done as well okay sounds good i appreciate it thank you so much brandon Yes, sir. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Well, I think we got some cash flow there. What do you say? Oh, we can't hear you, Liam. Because I'm muted. It's because I'm muted. <laughs> I think that's about as good as it gets for a verbal, man. You can't get much further on a verbal than that. Well, I, I mean, listen, for anybody that's watched me on here, they know I like to send over the contracts and get the contract signed live. Mm -hmm. But he was very clear about what he needed to make this deal go down. He said, no one else was willing to work with my realtor, okay? But he's willing to give me $2,200 a month in rent for $93,000. He's willing to give me $1,450 a month in rent for $65,000. And then he's willing to give me $850 a month in rent for $35,000, okay? That's, if that's I have deal. to wait on a realtor to write up a contract, I have no problem with that on those three deals. Those are those are home run cash flow deals. Um, and and here's the funny thing, Liam. I called him probably about forty five minutes ago, and he didn't answer. That was a second time of me calling calling him. Again, going back to what we talked about earlier in today's show, follow it's all about the follow-up. And, and what I treated this was like was instead of me coming to Liam and saying, hey, boss man, give me more new leads. Give me more new leads. It was let's go back in and let's just follow up. Maybe Brandon is done taking his shit and he's ready to answer the phone and he answers the phone and we end up with home run deals. So and for all the people who just don't know exactly how to structure a deal like that, right? So you guys are only doing wholesale deals and you don't know how to structure cash flow deals. What most people are going to be looking at is what we call the 1% rule, which means as long as the rent is 1% of the purchase price, meaning that in a hundred months you'd collect hundred percent of the value of the property. If you're in a big city, that's usually good to go, right? Now, if you're say in Detroit, someplace like that, like you know, maybe a high crime area or middle of nowhere, something like that, you're gonna be looking close to two percent. But to get a three package deal in an area that doesn't seem awful for these kind of prices, I mean, that is a lay down. That guy's ready. I mean, it, that that's such good cash flow right there. You can't complain. Yeah, I mean, one of the tools that I use when it comes to cash flow, it's a free website, mortgagecalculator.org. Okay. And one of the things that you can do there is, is just put yourself in a position of taking out a 20 year note at say six to 7% interest. You put in your property taxes, 
you put in your your uh, property insurance roughly for a year it'll show you what just a traditional mortgage would be on this right and then on top of that you need to add in probably 10 percent for vacancy five percent for capital expenditures which is all of your big roof hvac heater hot water heater items that you know you need to be setting aside monthly from your monthly cash flow and then you need to set aside five percent as well uh for maintenance so you got your vacancy you got your maintenance and you got your capital expenditures you're setting aside 20 percent of your monthly cash flow and if you're like me you'll also hire a property manager for 10 percent as well so you're actually setting aside 30 percent of your monthly cash flow those numbers plus your your note on it that you figure out at mortgagecalculator.org that gives you an actual number of how much net per month you're going to be making on that cash flow and on this it's going to be a pretty astronomical number so uh really really solid deal great uh, great lead uh the site is mortgagecalculator.org that's the one that i use it's free to use and it just allows you to play with the numbers and see what it looks like. I also do that a lot when I'm doing seller financing, mm -hmm. either where I'm seller financing or I'm asking a seller. So I was gonna do that um, with this uh, young lady. We've still got a, another hour before I call her, but I promise you guys, when I get on the phone with her, I will record that call. And if it turns out something, we'll, we'll post it for everybody. And now RJ, one question that I have is for this is, what is your acquisition method gonna be for this? Are you gonna be putting the cash up yourself? You got a commercial loan that you can just kind of utilize like a credit, what are you gonna do? On this one? Um, if, if we are to take this down, cause I honestly, I don't know much about the area and where they're located. So I need to kind of look at it and see, um, if we we're taking down ourselves, we would close on it with private money. And after probably six months, we would then cash out refi, um, into a, a long-term 20 year note. That's why I bring that up. Yep. Um, otherwise we're just going to, uh, simply wholesale it to someone that's local. Uh, but unfortunately, on this one, it sounds like this guy is uh, a kind of established in that market. So he probably knows everybody. So wholesaling is probably not going to be the easiest thing to do without him knowing about it. So we'll probably take these down and, and just keep them. And for those of you guys who don't know, is that you can go get private money on stuff like this. And once it's established cash flow, then any bank, you don't need to prove income besides what the rentals on. As long as the property's cash flowing, a bank would be stupid not to give you money for it because the next bank will. So. So uh, Lewis asks here, he has three properties in rural Pennsylvania. The total cash flow is $2,800 and she wants 70 K so 210 for all three. Um, I, I think, okay, on the cash flow side of things, that's good, right? Um, but you also need to be looking at, are you at least getting somewhere in the range of 25 to 30% equity? Uh, because not only is it our job to, to bring cash flow, for our investors it's also about bringing equity to them as well um so i would need a little bit more information to decide what you would do um but yeah you could absolutely assign deals that are just strictly rentals on cash flow mm -hmm. as long as there's still some equity the equity doesn't have to be as much as it would be on a flip so to answer that question twenty eight hundred dollars a month in cash flow they want 210 um it sounds like a fairly decent cash flow deal uh, but it also depends on the equity. So, Liam, um, I think I'm done. I think I think that was the one. To I end think on. that's good to go, man. I think that's a great one to end on. I think hey, that's we kept our perfect, perfect streak, though. That we did. Yep. We I mean, uh, if we're getting nitpicky, you know, you didn't. Oh, get it. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, here's what this is. What everyone's not seeing right now is this is a spoiled host, right? Oh here, man, okay? I am. He's. He's saying, we don't know if this is keeping the perfect streak because he didn't get ink on paper during the live, okay? I don't know, Liam. I don't know. I still think that was pretty good. Well, I mean, as we saw at the last cage match, even if you get ink on paper, maybe it's not even good enough for a streak. Yeah, it's just about how many people you text to get the vote. That's all that matters. <laughs> <laughs> Clip it. Uh, throw it up on the TikTok. Yeah, yeah. All right, Liam. I'm done. Cool, man. This Thank is it, everybody. On. Thank you so much. Liam, you got to sign off. You get kick me out of here. All right, man. I'll just kick you off for a movie, man. Peace out. Nice See to you, see bud. You. Yep, bye-bye. Everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm not going to make any dials for you tonight as much as I'd like to. I've got some things to get to on my end. But thank you guys for tuning in. You guys have been 
excellent. You guys have been just excellent. So what we're going to look at tonight is A, make sure you sign up for iSpeedDelete.com. Use the link that's in the description because that's RJ's link. So you guys will be supporting him, repping him, and then that's his incentive to come on next time and get us all these viewers. Um, other than that, make sure that you join our training community. I'm putting the link out there one more time. So if you guys haven't joined, make sure you guys hop in. We're doing daily trainings every single day. Finally, look up the Titanium Crucible. If you want to learn exactly how RJ is doing that, you just got to hop on, get in, jump in, and that's how you're going to learn and grow the fastest, just by building those connections. And, I mean, the Titanium Crucible is without a doubt one of the best masterminds out there. So it's totally worth getting into. But yeah. Other than that, thank you guys so much. We're going to be live again tomorrow. We've got a really cool guest, somebody who's a young up-and-comer, and she's a she's an agent. She's coming from it, uh, at it from the agent perspective, and she knows the social media game super well. So that's going to be really fun for you guys to look into. Yeah. Other than that, I hope you guys have a really excellent rest of your night. Get some deals closed, buy some leads, and uh, have a good one. I think what I'm going to close it off here with is just a little bit of an ad reel. Peace out, gang. Are you looking to implement pay-per-click advertising into your real estate business? iSpeedTheLead.com is an a la carte PPC marketplace, allowing investors to get into the world of PPC on a budget. Browse and purchase PPC leads a la carte from all around the United States. These leads are from motivated sellers who want to sell now. So if you want to find motivated sellers using PPC, go to iSpeedTheLead.com. We got you.